You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Under the voice of the You are exalted above the names. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator, and I'm here once again to share from the open heavens daily devotional compiled by the general overseer of the redeemed christian church of god pastor ea and the reason i'm sharing from this particular christian book is because the lord instructed me to do so as i prepare to enter into the year 2020 so this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional and that's why we call it season five and all those videos from 2020 they're all loaded on my youtube channel my handle on youtube is timmy again which is right on the screen i will encourage you to visit my channel not only to view the old open heavens videos which are a great study guide but most importantly to view the open heavens for the current day and i know that will bless you exceedingly and very very important whether you're watching me from facebook it's very important that you subscribe to my youtube channel and the lord bless you as you do like comment and share subscribe now pastor adeboye led me to christ in october 1997 a few years back when i was in the university of lagos nigeria in west africa and pastor gives you a few scriptures from the bible and a memory verse and that helps you understand the body of the text praise god so today is sunday february the 4th sunday february the 4th and happy birthday to whoever is having their birthday on february the 4th may the lord increase you more and more in the name of jesus and of the increase of his government upon your life and of peace there shall be no end in the mighty name of jesus christ praise god um so sunday february the 4th uh the title of today we're starting a, a two-day series today titled the holy ghost baptism and power part one and part two okay so it's going to be a two-day series so we'll complete <clears throat> we complete tomorrow so but today the holy ghost baptism and power part one now um this is the dispensation of the holy spirit this is the dispensation of the holy spirit we had the dispensation of the father with the law and the prophets and moses and you know all those people and then jesus christ came in and we had the dispensation of jesus christ our lord which lasted three and a half years and then um he died he he, he was crucified um, he was buried, he rose again, and he ascended. And the church, which is the last dispensation, the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, started um, on the day of Pentecost. And so now, anything that relates to the Holy Spirit, a Christian must take extremely seriously. Without the Holy Spirit, without you knowing um, the Holy Spirit, you're not going to make you, you, there's no Christianity without the holy spirit in fact moses said something in one of the verses we read a few days ago he was saying in um, um, exodus 33 that this is how um this is this is what makes the difference between us and other nations that your presence go with us if your presence does not go with us we will not go up hence and god said my presence will go with you and i'll give you rest that is what makes the person who makes the difference between um christianity and other so-called faith is the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Intercessor, the Advocate, the Strengthener, and the Standby. Now we're talking about the Holy Ghost, Baptism, and Power, Part 1. Praise God. So we're going to be reading from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. Amen. So if you're born again, you are already baptized into the body of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have been baptized into the Holy Spirit, but you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need you need the Holy... You, 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 you can get to heaven without praying in tongues or speaking in tongues, but you will lose a lot on the way. So you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, even though you already... You know, you already have the Holy Spirit in you. You need to be filled. Okay, so um, Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. I'm going to be reading from the traditional King James Version. And today again is Sunday, February the 4th. And thus goes the reading of God's word. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked, asked, alms, asked an alms. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with john said look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them then peter said silver and gold have i none 
but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him, him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. The, you know, Jesus Christ said, when he comes, he shall speak of me, he shall glorify me. So the Holy Spirit will always point to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the head of the corner. Eh? He's the head, he's the stone that the builders rejected, that God has made the head of the corner. Jesus Christ is the foundation. There's no other foundation that any man can lay which, than that which is laid in Christ Jesus. Okay, so there's, now look at that, that verse 6 is the bomb, my goodness. It says, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, they call Jesus, and, and you see, that name is recognized by the devils. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus the Son, Jesus Christ the Son of David, Jesus Christ Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, all those names, Jesus the Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So the healing took place at one, as soon as he used the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is one of our, is our major weapon of warfare that is not carnal. We have other weapons. Amen. Praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And the Bible says that the man's knee he received strength and he leaped and walked and the whole city scattered. Praise the Lord. So in this story, you know, Jesus had resurrected and Peter and John, very close. They were very, very close. They were part of the inner caucus. And they went to the temple at the hour of prayer, in the ninth hour. Now, in the Jewish calendar, the first hour is 6 a.m. Okay, so 6 a.m. is the first hour. So when you count... They went to the temple at 3 p.m. to go and pray. Now, this man who was lame, this disabled guy, he was there in the time of Jesus Christ. Jesus passed him. He must have asked arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw the Lord going in and out of the temple, but he was never healed. His time had not come. But the day, his day came. <laughs> his day came. His day of salvation. Hallelujah. Today is my day of salvation. Today is my day of deliverance. Today is our day of favor. Today is our day of blessing. Today is our uh, the day of deliverance. Today is our day of prosperity. Today is our day of favor. You know, God had mercy upon him. Um, he, he, he was at the right place at the right time. And Peter, a man filled with the spirit of God, used the name of Jesus and he got healed. The Holy Ghost, um, baptism and power power the bible says that christ is the power of god and the wisdom of god there's no power anywhere else you understand the, nobody has power all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto jesus christ and he has sent us in his name praise god and if you read the rest paul P peter said that don't look at us as if we have done something great it is through the name of this is by his name that this man is standing here who oh, holy ghost the holy ghost baptism and power and just know that god is um he's not mising the holy spirit he's more willing to give the holy spirit to us that we are willing to receive okay today's bible reading starts with now this implies that after the incident that happened be that happened before something new is happening now, Acts chapter 2 tells us about the day of Pentecost and how everyone at the upper room was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, then refers to something that was about to happen in the lives of Peter and John as a result of that incident. Clearly, that was the working of miracles. So, Pastor says that, you see this verse, Acts chapter 3 that we are reading here, yeah? it starts with now. That means that there's, you know, in those days, there were, in the original scroll, there was no chapters. So this is a continuation of something that happened in chapter 2, this chapter 3, and it starts with now. So it's a continuation of something that happened in chapter 2. And what happened in chapter 2? The Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ promised us came on the day of Pentecost, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke in, in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, something is just coming to my mind. Some people say, oh, what's the difference between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit? Same thing. One is King James. King James is Holy Ghost. Modern English is Holy Spirit. 
Okay, so if you're reading the King James, you see Holy Ghost. But in the modern translation, it's Holy Spirit. That's just the difference. Same person. So Holy Ghost baptism, Holy Spirit baptism. And here, the Spirit gave them utterance, capital S. That's talking about the Holy Spirit. Okay? So the, the power, what happened in Acts chapter 3 was as a result of what they received in Acts chapter 2 was when they were filled with the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues you shall receive okay let me not jump ahead of myself okay i missed the oh the 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 memory verse now the memory verse is taken from the book of acts chapter 1 verse 8 acts chapter 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be my witness and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth you shall receive power when the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in in jerusalem and in judea and in samaria and even unto the uttermost parts of the earth jesus christ is sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb amen pastor says when you get baptized in the holy ghost you carry divine power within you you have the power to walk miracles heal the sick and raise the dead unfortunately many christians become baptized and are satisfied with just speaking in tongues you received more than that when you were baptized in the holy ghost you received power to go out and do the work of god you know some christians kurimama, kurimama, kurimama. that's the only tongue that you have been speaking you need to be filled afresh there's a language it's a language you know hallelujah is a heavenly language speaking in tongues is a heavenly language so um we need fresh oil okay so that is telling us here that the day we receive the Holy Ghost, we do not just receive the ability to speak in tongues, we receive power, a dynamic ability to cause changes, not only in our lives, but in the lives of others. Praise the Lord. You receive more than that, you receive more than speaking in tongues when you receive the Holy Spirit. You receive power to go out and do the work of God. Praise the Lord. For the earnest expectation of the creature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. Okay, so to heal the sick. To raise, you know, and then uh, there's a scripture in Mark chapter 16, verses 17 to 20, you know, and the Bible says that Jesus Christ said, uh, you know, after he resurrected, he said, I give you power, um, um, we will lay our hands on the sick, they shall recover. If we drink any deadly things, um, you know, this sign shall follow them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. If they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. And then the Bible tells us that the Lord they went everywhere preaching the gospel and the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following so they went everywhere preaching the word and the lord walking with them so when we go out to evangelize when we share the word of god the lord is walking with us confirming the word with signs following many years pastor like is a test. He said many years ago i prayed to god for many weeks for power to do his work but he didn't respond at last, one night, he told me to be, keep quiet and begin to ask, and began to ask me some questions. Have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost? I said, yes. He said, what is written in Acts chapter 1 verse 8? I knew it offhand, so I quoted it to him. Then he said, you receive power after your baptism in the Holy Ghost. I responded, Lord, but I don't feel powerful. He replied, did I say the just shall live by feelings? <laughs> this is a conversation between daddy and God. And you're like, you know, father talks to his children you know the lord jesus the lord jesus, god speaks to us okay mm -hmm. god, god speaks to us and so we must learn to hear the voice of god so but you know daddy was praying that he wanted power to do the work of god when you you are speaking to god you are asking for something and god is not answering you it's because the answer is in front of you there and so eventually god said to him so have you not been baptized in the holy ghost he said yes he said so what is written in acts chapter and lord asked him what is written in acts chapter one verse eight he said you shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and you have received the holy ghost so you receive power then daddy said something which is very important most of us have this problem he said i don't feel like i have power and god said to him did i tell you that the just shall live by his feelings no god said to us that the just shall live by faith you don't walk by feelings you walk by faith the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sensory perception. In other words, just because you don't feel like God is hearing your prayer doesn't mean that God is not hearing your prayers. You don't walk by feelings. You know that when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, so whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When you, when you pray to God in the name of Jesus, you don't walk by your feelings. You know he hears. This is the confidence we have in him, that when we pray according to his will, he heareth us. So when you are praying according to the will of God, 
we are confident in the word of God that when we pray to him, his ears are open to our cries and he hears whether we feel it or not. You see, you, you're sitting in church today. God is moving around you whether you feel him or not. Sometimes you feel him. Sometimes he allows you to feel him. You understand? But whether you feel him or not, God is moving around you. He's walking around. He's in the midst, Lord in the midst of his people. He's mighty to save and mighty to deliver. So God is there. Whether you see him or not, whether you see him, you, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Do you understand? So you walk by faith. You walk by the word of God, whether you feel it or not. And that's why we give him, when you finish praying, you give him thanks because I know you have heard me and I know you have answered me. Amen. That's faith. Pastor then said, the next morning, a sick child was brought to me for prayers. I was afraid. But then I remembered the conversation I had with God the previous night. So I laid my hands on the child and prayed. And not long after, I felt the child go numb. And I thought to myself, has the child died? But when I finished praying and opened my eyes, I realized that the child was sound asleep. The mother said that the child had not slept in days. But now she was sure that God had healed her child. You know? And you know, when you, when you pray for the sick... When you command the devil to go out, as soon as you command the devil to go out, the devil has gone out. Whether he's manifesting or not, he he has to obey because you have used the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is the key, amen, to the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power. And this is exactly what pastor did. He followed that the just does not live by feelings, but by faith in the word of God. Are you a child of God? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Then we can lay our hands. These signs follow them that believe. In my name, Jesus Christ said, you shall cast out devils. We shall speak with new tongues. We will lay our hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Praise the Lord. So even if pastor prayed for this child and the child had not slept, the prayer, God had answered the prayer and God will heal. He will confirm the word of his servants and perform all the counsel of his messengers. Remember that God walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. So pastor then admonishes us that we should go out and use the power that God has already given to to us. If not, it will remain dormant. When I realized that I had been empowered by God, I was hungry to keep laying hands on the sick. And that is how I've gotten to the stage where many great miracles happen through me today. I have been using the power the power God gave me since I, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and it has been growing since then. So you have received that power. Don't let it be dormant. Exercise it. Use it. When you see a sick person, te- you know, when you buy a new car, you want to test, you be using it. You understand? You buy a washing machine, you have to use it. Otherwise, what will happen? It will get spoiled. It would, it will get, start to rust. Do you understand? It will be dormant. It will be inactive. So we have to activate the power of God. The more you use it, that's what pastor did. The more we use it, the more active it becomes the more it begins it works more do you understand so we have to activate that power through use when you go out on evangelism and somebody says oh this is that be just re- pray for the person pray for the person and speak to the sickness i command the sickness to go in the name of jesus use the power and the devils will obey us when we use the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise the Lord. Now, the key point here is if you have received the Holy Ghost baptism with the evidence of speaking in tongues, begin to use the power God gave you. You can start using it in intercession. You know, start using it in intercession and begin to command devils to leave nations and leave homes. Hallelujah. We're activating the power that way also. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, as you are in church, praise the Lord. Um, the power of God is going to touch you. Make sure you, you know, the, the, the Peter and John, Peter and John said to the, to the lame man, look on us, give God your attention. Don't be distracted in church. It's, don't sit down near somebody that is making noise. You are here for serious business. Okay. So listen to the word of God, pay the price of attention. This is not the time to be sleeping in church. Okay. This is not the time to be gossiping with your friends. You are here for serious business. And as you look on him, look on us. Look, look, the Bible says, uh, Jesus Christ said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man has been lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. So listen to the word, focus on the word, refuse to be distracted. Amen. And the power of God will come upon you. As you, are, as you listen and as you look, you will be changed and transformed. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us your words today. You sent your word. It heals us and it delivers us from destruction. The Bible says that if men as wicked as they are, they know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will God give the Holy Ghost to those that ask him? 
Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for myself and my brothers and my sisters who are listening to this open heavens today. I pray that you pour out your spirit upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Baptize us with your Holy Ghost and with fire. Fill us afresh right now in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that you anoint our head with fresh oil. Therefore, cause our cup to run over today in the name of Jesus. We are asking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and of fire as we sit in church today in Jesus' name. We receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for your Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. Thank you so much, Pastor Mommy and Pastor Daddy, for um, the opportunity to share the open heavens with your church. God bless you exceedingly. I appreciate you so much. And while you're on my channel, brothers and sisters, please don't forget to subscribe. And the Lord bless you. Have a beautiful service at church. God bless you and have a nice day. I'll see you tomorrow.